The factorial of a number is the product of that number and all positive integers less than that number. It can be written like this, and like this, and like this. And the factorial of zero is one. You might say, well, that makes no sense at all. And indeed, it doesn't at first glance, because it is more or less just a convenient definition. The permutation function calculates how many ways we can arrange r objects from a set of n distinct objects where the order matters. Say we have four objects. If we want to permute two at a time, then there are 12 ways to do so. But what if we want to permute all four objects? Setting 0 factorial equal to 1 gives us a total of 24 ways to do so. The choose function calculates the number of ways to select r objects from a set of n distinct objects where the order of selection does not matter. So if we have four objects and we choose two, we find there are six ways to do so. If we choose all four objects, we get a result of one, and indeed there is only one way to choose all four objects. Defining zero factorial as one also allows us to expand certain functions as power series, like the exponential, cosine, hyperbolic cosine, and binomial functions. Finally, this definition is consistent with the gamma function, which generalizes factorials to non-integer values. To remain continuous, the gamma function must assign the value 1 to 0 factorial. The gamma function is defined by this improper integral. When you plug in a real number for z, it evaluates the area under this curve, which behaves similarly to a factorial. When z equals 1, this becomes the integral of e to the negative t from 0 to infinity, which is 1. For positive integers n, gamma of n returns n minus 1 factorial. You can see the behavior of the gamma function more clearly in the 2D plot of the real part of gamma. The red curve shows how the function behaves along the real axis. It spikes to infinity at 0, negative 1, negative 2, and so on. To the right of 0, the gamma function grows rapidly, even faster than exponential growth. But it's not just defined for real values. It's actually defined over the entire complex plane, except at certain singularities. The double factorial of a number n is the product of all the positive integers up to n that have the same parity as n. A factorial can be written as a product of double factorials. We can define the double factorial when n is even, like this. And this is the definition for odd n. It can also be expressed using powers of 2 and standard factorials. The double factorial is also expressible as a single formula using the ceiling function. For example, when n equals 4, the ceiling of n over 2 minus 1 is 1, and the formula evaluates to 8. When n equals 5, the upper limit becomes 2, and the product gives 15. The double factorial can be related to the gamma function, where z is a complex value. And if we plug in 0 for z, we get that the double factorial of 0 equals the square root of 2 over pi. Some applications of the double factorial include calculating the volume of an n-dimensional ball, evaluating series representations of pi, computing the even moments of a normally distributed random variable, and counting the number of rooted binary trees with labeled leaves. The triple factorial multiplies terms decreasing by 3. If n is congruent to 0 mod 3, the product ends at 3. If n is congruent to 1 mod 3, the product ends at 1. And if n is congruent to 2 mod 3, the product ends at 2. We can write the triple factorial using product notation where n is congruent to r mod 3. 
We can generalize this idea to any step size a, leading to quadruple factorials, quintuple factorials, and beyond. If we let a and n be natural numbers where n is congruent to r mod a, then the a factorial of n is this product from n down to r in steps of a. And this definition can also be written in product form. The following factorial is the product of n consecutive decreasing integers starting from x. And the rising factorial is the product of n consecutive increasing integers starting from x. The definition of each can be converted to product form. The following factorial can be written in terms of the rising factorial and vice versa. Each can also be defined using the gamma function, as well as regular factorials. And in turn, the regular factorial can be written in terms of rising and falling factorials. These factorials show up in many places, such as the differentiation of power functions, factorial moments of probability distributions, and hypergeometric functions. The subfactorial is the closest integer to n factorial over e, which we can denote by adding one half and taking the floor of this value. The most common use of the subfactorial is calculating the number of derangements of a set of size n, where a derangement is a permutation of the elements of a set in which no element appears in its original position. The superfactorial of n is the product of the first n factorials. It can also be defined in product form. And it can be defined in terms of exponents as well. An interesting fact is that the superfactorial of 4k divided by 2k factorial is a square number, where k is any positive integer. Just like how the regular factorial can be extended to non-integer values using the gamma function, the superfactorial has a smooth extension given by something called the Barnes G function. The Barnes G function has both a product representation and an integral representation. For positive integer inputs n, it returns the superfactorial of n minus 2, while for n equals 0 or negative integers, it evaluates to 0. The hyperfactorial of a positive integer n is the product of the first n positive integers, each raised to the power of itself. It can also be expressed in product form, and it follows the usual convention that the hyperfactorial of 0 is 1. The hyperfactorial can also be continuously interpolated using the k function, which we see here written in terms of the gamma function. The most common use of hyperfactorials is computing the sequence of discriminants of Hermit polynomials in their probabilistic form. This is the exponential factorial of a positive integer n, where n is raised to the power of n minus 1, which is raised to the power of n minus 2, and so on, all the way down to 1. The sequence of exponential factorials is the fastest growing of all the factorials in this video. Its growth is known as tetrational, which might be an interesting topic for another time. If we sum the reciprocals of the exponential factorials all the way to infinity, we get a transcendental number. 
meaning it's not the root of any polynomial with integer coefficients, or in other words, it can't be closely approximated by any fraction of two integers. The primorial of the nth prime number is the product of the first n prime numbers. The alternating factorial is the absolute value of the alternating sum of the first n factorials of positive integers. The Barkova factorial essentially tells us how to generalize the factorial function to any subset of the integers. Thank you so much for watching, and feel free to let us know which factorial is your favorite in the comments.